Hi everyone, this is Celine from Blue Cala Patterns and welcome to video three for the Buttercup Bucket Bag. In this video, we're going to be uh, sewing up the lining of our bag. Um, you're going to need the following items. You're going to need your bottom lining piece. You're going to need uh, both main body lining pieces. You're going to need your slip pocket pieces. There should be two of them. You'll need your interior zipper facing piece and your zipper pocket lining pieces. You will need the two remaining top band pieces, the lining pieces. However, I use the same vinyl as my exterior. And then you're going to need your um, zipper panels, so the two exterior pieces and the two lining pieces. You're going to need your nine inch interior uh, zipper for your zipper pocket. And you're going to need your, ex your main zipper closure zipper, which could either be zipper tape like I'm using or a finished zipper. So we're going to start by sewing the pockets into our lining pieces. And this is fairly simple. I think every single one of my videos shows how to sew uh, slip pockets and uh, zipper pockets. So what we're going to do first is we are going to take both of our slip pocket pieces and we're going to pin them right sides together along the top edge. I guess I'm going to use clips since that's what I have right next to me. So you're going to sew them together along the top edge, making sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end. The slip pocket pieces are sewn together along the top. Now we're going to um, press that top edge. What I like to do first is press that seam allowance open. And then I flip the pieces so they're wrong sides together. and then I press the, the top edge flat. Then I'm gonna go over to the machine and I'm just going to top stitch that seam allowance along the top. All right, so this is top stitch along the top. I'm just gonna take this out of the way. And you're going to take one of your lining panels and you're gonna place the slip pocket piece on top and you wanna have the, uh, the raw edges here aligned to the bottom edge of your lining panel. And actually I'll just use clips. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to base the slip pocket in place all the way around these edges here. So I'm just going to go and quickly base this in place all along these three edges with one quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so now that it's based in place, we want to divide this into three separate slip pockets. Now I gave some suggestions for spacing for the pockets in the pattern, but really you can separate these pockets as you like. Maybe you want to add some pen slip pockets. It's totally up to you and you can customize them as you like. In the pattern, I just spaced them at six inches from the right hand side and then five inches. Okay, so now you're going to sew from your bottom marks to your top marks. When you get to the top edge of the pocket piece, make sure that you backstitch a couple of times just to make the opening of your pocket stronger. You should now have three separate slip pockets on this lining piece. Now we're going to set this aside and we're going to sew our zipper pocket. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your zipper facing piece and on the wrong side we are going to draw a rectangle 
that is nine inches wide. by three-eighths of an inch high. Okay, so you should be drawing a box, a rectangle box shape. Okay. Now, you're going to take your remaining lining piece and we're going to pin this facing piece so that they are right sides together and you want it to be somewhat centered on the lining piece and you also want the top edge of your zipper facing piece to be one inch from the top edge of the lining piece. Now I don't, I'm very bad, I don't usually measure the exact center in this step uh, to make sure that my zipper facing is perfectly centered but if you are particular about it being centered, then you would fold your lining piece in half and find your center mark at the top here, and then do the same for your facing piece, although your facing piece is exactly 11 inches wide, so you would put a center mark at five and a half inches. I'm a little bit more loosey-goosey about this sort of thing, and I've actually gotten pretty good at finding the center just by looking at it. So we're pinning this in place and then we're going to go over to the machine and we're going to sew along that rectangle box that we just drew on the facing piece. Keep your needle in the down position when you're rotating at the corners and it'll give you some nice sharp corners. Okay, so the facing piece is sewn to the lining piece. Now we're going to draw a line to the center of that box. My pen has stopped working. Okay, and you can stop about half an inch from each end. And then from that uh, center line, you wanna draw four diagonal lines. So they go from the center line to each of the four corners. And then you're going to cut along those lines that you just drew. use my rotary cutter for the big horizontal line and then I use the ends of very sharp scissors and when you're cutting you want to try and get as close as you can to those corners without cutting any of the stitching and that's actually pretty important because if you cut some of the stitching then your your zipper facing won't be properly sewn to the lining piece anymore okay so now we're going to pull that facing piece towards the wrong side of the lining piece through the opening that we just cut. And I take my time doing this part and pressing that seam allowance to make sure that I have a very nice rectangle opening for my zipper pocket. So try not to rush this stage. is being very stubborn and not coming through. Okay, so I will start with the bottom edge since it's being very stubborn. So you're flipping that zipper facing piece towards the wrong side and then I kind of roll the seam allowance in between my fingers and I do a tiny little section at a time. Um, if you don't press the seam allowance um, perfectly. What ha tends to happen is you're losing some of your lining. So your, your lining ends up being a tiny bit smaller or it sort of warps. So you wanna make sure that you've pushed the fabric out at that seam as much as possible. You really wanna to get to the, the stitching in that seam. So I go all around and I do first from the right side and then I'll flip it over and I'll press again from the wrong side. Now if you see some puckering at your corners, 
That means when you were cutting the lines inside the rectangle box, you didn't get close enough to the corner. So you can flip it over and try to cut a little bit closer, but just make sure that you're not cutting the st stitching. So I'm going to flip it over because it's being a bit stubborn and it doesn't want to stay on the wrong side. So if you have a little bit of puckering at the corners on this side, I find if you sometimes if you just give it a little tug and then press again, it sort of fixes itself. Okay, so that's what this is going to look like when you're done pressing. We can set that aside for now. And you're going to take your two zipper pocket lining pieces. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to fold up that bottom edge towards the wrong side, about 3 8 to half an inch. It doesn't matter exactly the amount that you fold up as long as it's the same on both pieces. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just trim away from the top straight edge, so the not the folded edge, but the opposite edge. You're going to trim away one inch. Now you're going to flip this right side up and you're going to take that interior zipper and you're going to place it along the top edge with the pull on the right and you're just going to somewhat center it along that top edge here so you want an even amount of space at the beginning and the end and then you're going to do exactly what we did for that exterior zipper pocket you're just going to sew the zipper to the lining piece along that top edge with one quarter inch seam allowance and make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so the zipper is attached to the lining piece and now we're just going to press the lining piece away from the zipper. And then you're going to take the remaining lining piece and you're going to do exactly the same thing. So this is really a repetition of uh, what the steps that we did for uh, the exterior zipper pocket. It's the same thing except we're using a different size zipper for this step and the bottom edges of our lining pieces are folded. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing and sew these together along the top edge with one quarter inch seam allowance and back stitching at the beginning and the end. Okay, so the second piece is sewn on. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing and just press this away from the zipper. So now we're going to flip this so that the lining pieces are wrong side facing up and the zipper is right side facing up and you want your zipper pull on your left. Then you're going to take your lining piece and place it over top and you want that nine inch zipper uh, inside that the rectangle opening here of your lining piece and 
You can double check your placement by making sure that the outer edges of your lining pieces are lined up with those edges of the zipper facing. And you can do that on both sides. So those are nicely lined up. And now we're just going to pin this in place. And then we're going to go over to the machine and we're going to sew the zipper with attached lining pieces in place. So you're going to sew all the way around the rectangle box with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. And again, when you're doing the corners, when you're rotating at the corners, if you keep your needle in the down position, it'll make nice sharp corners. Take your time when you're doing this step, and if you need to adjust the position of your, uh, your zipper or your fabric so that the zipper is perfectly centered inside the box, you can do that. Okay, so the zipper is now attached to the lining. If we flip this over, what we're going to do now is we're going to sew up the sides of the zipper pocket, but we're going to leave the bottom open. So you're going to take the top piece and you'll fold it down so that the bottom folded edges meet perfectly. And then you'll see that it sort of bubbles a little bit, like this is a bit longer. And that is intentional because I like to press the lining piece upwards and that way there it won't get caught in our zipper when we're opening and closing our zipper pocket. So I press it up and away from the zipper. Okay, now we're just going to sew up the sides here. So you, when you're sewing, you're gonna flip this so this is facing up. And you're just going to flip the, the lining piece out of the way. And you're going to sew from the top edge here, back stitch. Get as close as you can, see a little triangle of fabric here. You wanna sew over that little triangle of fabric all the way down to the bottom. And then you're going to back stitch at the bottom folded edges. We're not sewing this bottom edge, we're leaving it open because we're going to use that to turn our bag. Then you're going to come over to this side and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to move this out of the way, you're going to back stitch, sew all the way down, sewing over the little triangle of fabric, down to the bottom edges and back stitching. Okay, so now the two sides of your zipper pocket are sewn up and the bottom edge is open. Open up your zipper pocket all the way right now so that we don't forget to do it uh, later on. And there's your opening. So now we're going to set that aside and we're going to sew up our zipper panels. Now the first thing we're going to do is for the two fab, I'm using fabric for the lining and I'm using vinyl for the top. If you were using fabric for all four, you would start by pressing one shorter end towards the wrong side, about quarter inch. And I'm just gonna use a clip so that it stays folded. So if you're using fabric for all four, you're going to press all four. Since I'm using vinyl for the exterior, I can't press it, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue the fold. And of course, I put my glue away. So I'm just using a little bit of fabric tack and just going to put a little bit of glue here. On the shorter end of both. And then I'm going to fold it over and I'll use clips until the glue dries.
Obviously a little bit faster and simpler if you've used fabric for all four. Okay, while we're waiting for the glue to dry, we're going to prepare our zipper. So we need to base the open end, so the, 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 the end of the zipper that opens, we're going to uh, base the opening with the zipper tape angled outwards. If you're using a, a ready-made zipper, then you would be just angling the part above the stopper, at the little stoppers at the opening. You would just be uh, curving outwards the top portion, exactly the same way as I am the zipper tape. Um, so what, what I'll start by doing, and I'll take this out of the way. So I want to make a mark on my zipper, on the zipper tape, on both sides at exactly the same location. So you want these lines, my pencil is not marking at all. Okay, so this isn't really gonna show very well on video, but I have marks here at exactly the same spot. Then you wanna open up the zipper past those marks. And what we're going to do is we are going to pinch the zipper tape at that mark and then fold it upwards so that the edge of that pinch meets the edge of the zipper coil here. And then we are going to go over to the machine and we're just going to base this in place so that it stays curved outwards like this. And then we're doing the same thing on this side. So I'm gonna go over to the machine and base this in place and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've used contrasting thread so that you can see what it looks like when I've uh, basted the zipper tape outwards. That's what it looks like from the wrong side. Okay, and then if you close it, these want, you want these to be perfectly aligned right here, okay? One thing you'll also wanna do so that you don't actually pull, pull that zipper pull right off your zipper is just sew across the teeth here, just so that you don't accidentally pull it off. You'll be very frustrated if you do that. I haven't done it yet, but I will do it. Um, and then we'll start attaching our zipper panels to the zipper. So now we're going to sew the uh, zipper to the zipper panels. You're going to take one of your lining pieces and you're going to lay it on your work surface right side up. I want the folded end here and the not folded end on this side. You're going to place the zipper over top along the top edge. You're going to leave about 3 8 of an inch of space here at the beginning of the zipper. And you're going to clip this in place. I'm gonna take this clip here at the bottom. And what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly baste the zipper to the lining panel first. Okay, just along this top edge with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance, just a quick basting stitch. The zipper is now basted to the lining piece. You're going to take one of the exterior pieces and you're going to place it so that the zipper and the lining piece and the exterior piece are right sides together. So your zipper is right side up, your lining is right side up, your zipper panel is going to be right side facing down. And you want the folded ends to be lined up with the folded ends of your lining piece. So it's really important that these are lined up. This here is a bit more forgiving at this end, but what we really want is for the folded ends to be perfectly aligned. Okay, so I'm going to finish clipping these together. Okay, so now we're going to sew these together. We're going to start at the folded ends. We're gonna use one quarter inch seam allowance and you're going to start by backstitching, then sewing all along the zipper. 
Once you've reached the past the folded end here of your zipper coil, you're going to stop and rotate and sew all the way across here and back stitch again. The seam allowance here is about one quarter inch. All right, so all the, I've sewn through all the layers here. And um, I had to open up my zipper because you want to move that pull out of the way once you're sewing this area here. Now we're just going to trim a bit of the fabric here at the corner. I don't usually trim my the end of my zipper because then I have to seal it again. And I would rather it not be too short because if it comes apart, then the whole zipper panel comes apart. As long as the end of the zipper is hidden inside the zipper panels, I leave it be and I don't trim again. The, really the important part is just trimming a bit here at the corner so that you can poke out the corners and they'll be nice sharp corners. So now we're going to flip this so that it is right side facing out. I'm going to close my zipper because it allows me to pull a little bit more. I'm just going to use my pencil here and just poke out that corner a bit. Oop, lost the eraser. Now, of course, I've made my life complicated by using vinyl here, so I can't press the uh, exterior zipper panel away from the zipper before top stitching. So what I usually do in this case is I just line them all up together like this, and I kind of tug, and I clip all along that outside edge. And then when I am top stitching, I finger press as I'm going. So if you're using fabric, then you would just press these away from the zipper before you top stitch. But I'm just going to use clips to hold the outer edges together because it is really important that these outer edges are aligned. So now I'm going to go over to the machine and I'm going to top stitch starting here. I'm going to stop, rotate and go all along the zipper, stop and rotate and sew those folded ends together here. And I actually use, you could use 1 8 of an inch seam allowance, but I usually go a little bit smaller. It's really uh, whatever, uh, whatever you like best on your zipper panels. And while I'm top stitching here, what I'm going to do is I can't, since I wasn't able to press, I'm going to sort of tug to make sure that it's nice and flat and sort of finger press as I'm top stitching. Okay, so this zipper panel here is attached. There's the wrong side and I've top stitched. And what I also did for the outer edges is I did a quick basting stitch with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance uh, because I want to make sure that these edges here of the lining and exterior zipper panels are nicely aligned. Now the key to sewing on these two onto the other side is really to make sure that this end and this end are aligned this way. That will make a really nice looking zipper panel. So what you wanna do, we're going to, we're repeating the same steps that we just did, except everything is flipped over. And when I start uh, pinning these, what I want to make sure is that these folded edges are perfectly aligned. And you can see a little bit of this top zipper panel sticking out here, the bottom of the zipper. So you wanna make sure that that's all very nicely aligned. And the way that I make sure that they stay nicely aligned is by basting that zipper to the lining piece. And then everything else sort of seems to fall in place nicely. Okay, and you should still have 3 8 of an inch uh, space here in front of your zipper. So I'm just going to do that quick basting stitch again with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so the lining piece is basted on and we're doing exactly the same thing again. We're taking that exterior piece, we're making sure that these folded ends are lined up perfectly. <clears throat> That vinyl is very slippery, so it makes it harder to pin it in the right spot. And now we're doing exactly the same thing as we did last time. And we are going to sew this way 
So backstitch, sew along with one quarter inch seam allowance. When we get just past the zipper coil, we stop, we rotate, we sew down. Uh, make sure you open your zipper to get this out of the way. And then you backstitch again. Okay, so these are sewn together. We're doing exactly the same thing and just trimming a bit of the seam allowance here at the corner. And then flipping these right side out. Zip it up so you could pull a little bit better at the corner here. And I'm also going to use my pencil again to poke out that corner. Okay, and then again I'm doing the same thing and clipping these outer edges together since I can't press. And then I'll go over and do the top stitching again. So I'm going to pause the video and finish this part since you've already seen it before. And then we'll just do the last few steps of assembling our lining. The zipper panel is now finished. Now what we're going to do before we uh, continue is we're going to mark tons of centers. So. Start by folding the zipper panels in half this way and mark the centers on the top and the bottom of the zipper panels themselves. Then you're going to fold this in half this way and you're going to mark the center along the top and then you're going to fold it in half this way and you're going to Mark the center along the bottom on the wrong side. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for the second lining piece. We need bottom center on the wrong side, and we need top center on the right side. And you'll see why we need these very shortly. And then the bottom, we're actually going to use the pattern piece again, which of course I've put away. So we're going to start by marking the center on the straight edge using the fold line on the pattern piece. And then I use this mark for this center, flip it over. And mark this center. Okay. So now we're going to attach the top bands. Oh, I forgot to mark centers here. So we just want to mark centers uh, on these pieces along the bottom on the wrong side. So these are your top band lining pieces. Okay. All right, so we're gonna start by taking one lining piece, face its right side facing up. And then we place the zipper panel with the top edge aligned with the top edge and those center marks are aligned. Okay, and then we're going to just base this in place with one quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, now we're going to take the top band and we'll have you have to flip it so that the bottom edge is aligned with the top edge here. And again, we're lining up those center marks and clipping it in place. And then we're going to sew through all of the layers. So just in case it's not clear, this is wrong side facing up. These two are right side facing up. It's a little bit hard to see when you're using black. Black doesn't usually show up very well on videos. So I'm sewing all the way across through all the layers, making sure that I backstitch at the beginning and the end. 
Okay, this is attached and again, we're doing exactly like we did with the exterior. Um, if you're using fabric, you can press the seam allowance and the top band away from the main body lining panel here. Um, I'm using vinyl, so again, I'm just going to be finger pressing and sewing. And I'm top stitching that seam allowance along the bottom edge. Okay, so that's what this looks like now. We're going to repeat exactly the same steps to attach the other lining panel to the remaining lining and the remaining top band. So I'm not going to show you all these steps because you've now seen it done three times. But it's the same thing. You base this in place, then you place this over top, lining up those center marks, sew together, make sure, making sure you backstitch, press away, and top stitch the seam allowance. So I'm going to go ahead and finish all these steps, and then... Um, I'll show you what's next. Okay, so once you have your zipper panels attached, um, this is sort of what it should look like at this point. And I just want to get my zipper here out of the way, so I'm just going to kind of hold it like this. We're going to do exactly what we did for the exterior, and we're going to sew up the sides of the lining panels together. And you start by clipping the bottom edge of the top bands because you want those to be perfectly aligned so that it looks nice. And then you clip the rest. And then you sew them together, making sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end. And then you're going to do exactly the same thing for the other side. You clip the bottom edges of those top bands And again, you sew these together and you make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Now the sides have been sewn up. Uh, now it's time to attach the bottom. We're doing this exactly as we did for the exterior. You start by uh, clipping the centers. So, of course, the centers on the bottom and the rounded ends, those are pinned to the side seams. And I clip them together with the seam allowance open. And then the center of the lining panels is attached to the centers on the longer straight edges of the bottom. So like this, we're doing exactly the same thing. There's really just one difference. So once your centers are clipped, you're going to clip everything in between. Now, <clears throat> sometimes the lining can be a bit trickier uh, to avoid puckers. And the reason with, we, why it's a little bit trickier is because there's less interfacing on those lining fabrics, so they do have a little bit more uh, stretch to them. And sometimes that can make things a little bit more difficult to get right at the corners and there can be some puckering. So add a lot of clips, so very slowly. And like I mentioned for the exterior, if it does help, you can clip notches in that seam allowance, one quarter inch maximum. And usually that gets the fabrics to sit a little bit more nicely. Now the one difference here when you're sewing on the bottom on the lining is that you need to take a larger seam allowance so that your, ba your lining isn't baggy inside your exterior shell. So I usually use uh, a much larger seam allowance than 3 8 uh, You can try half an inch and if that isn't uh, to your liking, you can actually increase it to five eighths of an inch. So the key here as well, lots of clips or pins. And on those curved edges, you can clip some notches into the seam allowance so that everything sits 
a little bit more nicely. So I'm going to finish clipping this and then I'm going to sew it together. I am probably going to do those notches and the seam allowance just to make everything sit nicely. And then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done sewing. Okay, so the bottom is sewn on and I just wanted to show you, uh, these are my notches. So all we have left to do is just trim a bit of that seam allowance away from our lining. Um, I kind of wasn't precise with my seam allowance, but it's sort of close to half an inch or five eighths of an inch. And this is the end of this video. In the last video, we're just going to sew together our lining and exterior shells and we're going to sew up our crossbody strap and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add our metal zipper end to the end of our zipper lots of little pieces here so this is what we should have at this point uh, you want to open up your zipper pretty much all the way and and then we'll finish the assembly in the last video.